Good morning, your voice out. Good morning, your voice out. It's not about the doc, it's about Miami. The seal First one in Miami seal. Beach. Oh. <laughs> okay. A voice out last night. Gary was here for 1 20 a.m. Putting out the new equipment. For the cameras, these are showing we're going to have a nicer and better, smoother experience like this. <laughs> All right. Ruby Nishma singing Mara Sirius is a lot of high. Mosa has a lot, a lot of cutting and everything to do today. Sponsored by Steven Sokol on the other side of Gorba Bas Yosef. My grandmother raised me and my siblings along with my mother at Sadekis, who's always near my heart. My Lord Spiegelman, in honor of of our sixth seal together. Whoever started Brochus, this is our sixth seal. Mazel talked to all the assignment 550 days ago is when it started. Tremendous, tremendous thing. Today is the seal of Masechta Siuma, probably my favorite Masechta as of now. It's, uh, it's sad. It's sad and it's happy. It's, it's, it's mixed emotions. So beautiful Mazel Tov to everybody. With the entire worldwide MBI family for the first name of Lib Yitzchok, Menachem Ben Tova Fega. Sponsored, Shirmir Bas Reza Gidor Rizchus Shidduch. And sponsored, Rosenberg family, member of the fourth year side of a matriarch, Sylvia Rosenberg, Shevalea. Is this here? Yeah. Shevalea Bas Gidalia. Loving Bobby and Alta Bobby on the yard side. Rab Boisai. First of all, here is the picture. We haven't seen the video. Here's the picture of the Chevra in Miami. This reminds me of New Year's in Australia. You know, like we thought we were going to be the first. There's always one country, one place, a little earlier than everybody else. Michael Benchitrid is the man. Yishkoyach, Michael. By the way, there's a guy there in Miami. Some of you know, I didn't have a chance to read it yet, but because of this Miami scene, his name is Mike Ben Melech. I believe that's how you pronounce his name. A reporter from the Miami Herald found him across the street of the building that collapsed reading something. So she walks over and says, what are you doing, sir? And he says, I am learning the bath with Rebelli. And here he is. He went to learn Torah right there. And he said, he's learning the sugya of the Mapolas and all that that we learned. So beautiful. I have a, a few very, very good emails here. This is one of my favorite. I actually called this person up. First person I called in a half a year from email. I hope I can keep it together. It's not that emotional, but when I read it, it brought tears to my eyes. Dear Rabbi Stefanski, wow, this week will be history. The chills that run through my body cannot be put into words. I am 37 years old, married 15 years, and a father of three girls. Out of high school, I learned the local base measure for a bit at night, but never actually finished what I started. As time went on, I grew busier and busier with just making time for davening, work, a sheer once in a blue moon, and most important, family time. It happens very often. You're in yeshiva, learning away, steiging, and then you get married. And then you get busier and busier, and you barely have time for a, a davening. After COVID hit, I've been stuck working from home since March 2020 after watching clips of yours. Even before I fell for the free Gemara, your words hit me. By the way, we're up to 1,402 Gemaras, pushing that 1,500 mark. So my words hit him. Ishtablos, whether I work 16 or 12 hours a day, as long as I do my Ishtablos, Parnassah will still come. 12 is an exaggeration. All you need is like, what, 7, 8? Baruch Hashem, this week your words paid off. I'll be finishing my first Masechta ever. First Masechta ever. This excitement is not just for me, but with my parents, wife, children, who support me every day. His parents are excited about this. It's, it's amazing to hear my daughter say, Tati, don't lay down. You have the daf in an hour. Because he learns, I called him up, he said he learns the daf at 12 a.m. So they know that if he goes to sleep, a little, if he lays down before, it's going to be a problem. So they remind him. I do, Mark. Mark's back in the house. Mark, Rabbi, I didn't realize. First of all, they showed me a clip of him coming in. From the time he opened the door to the time I realized that he was here was a fraction of a second. That's all it took, right? And he flew in specifically to be here with us for the Siem. Mark Ashkenazi, unbelievable. You should go for being here again. Baruch Hashem. Tati, don't lay down. You know what this reminded me? Rav Nisim Kaplan's speech that everybody cried at the, the, the Bracha Siyum when his wife was just lifted three months before that and he fell asleep with his Gemara on his face and his daughter woke him up at two in the morning and said, Tati, you didn't finish the daf. It's an unbelievable story. Anyway, 
Rav Stefanski, with your help, you have changed my life, especially my attitude towards it. Your claim to fame is 60 days and you're hooked. However, you had me at good morning, Rabbi Isai. Thank you to the entire MDY family. I have to thank them as well. Gary and Yeshua up there in that booth until 1.20 in the morning. Noam for throwing this a big seam that we're having tonight. Menachem Sel Nachem Seltzer for being the MC tonight. Woo! The Seltzer boy up there. Mordechai, not related. Thank you to the entire MDY family and Yosef who does all... He also was also up to 1.30 sending out videos and stuff. Thank you to the entire MDY family. Looking forward to many more. Mendy Greenblatt. We got to do more. I know it's going to be late. And we have to finish. Yeah, yeah. Whatever we don't finish today, we finish tonight. I am 62 years old. These are unbelievable emails. Reboi Sai. As my youth is threatened by diminishing, so are my abilities to occupy myself with fun pastimes of my youth. Life was beginning to be less exciting. And the prospects for the future looked even dimmer, even scary. I know that, le that learning Torah is one thing that elderly Jews were still enjoying their golden years, but I never had a love of learning. As a matter of fact, I didn't enjoy it at all. It frightened me because I was always an active person. I didn't know what I had to look forward to. This past Monday, I came across the ad for the free Gemara and a link to your shir. I listened to it and it lit something within me. Came Tuesday and I was looking forward to all, all day to be listening to your shir again. Now Wednesday morning, I'm again looking forward to it. I don't know what it is about your shir that is acting in such a magnet, but it's a gift. I wish you tremendous success in being a man of tens of hundreds of thousands of shabbos in the future. And I should keep you healthy and well. The Mashiach comes, the biggest shakoyach, David Braun. And finally, from Lauren Spiegelman. Until joining MDY, I had only made two siyumim in my life. Lauren, how old are you? Be 50, in three weeks. 50 in three weeks. Until joining MDY, I only made two siyumim. Not because I haven't picked up a Gemara in a million years, but you know how it goes. My yeshiva years. This man ended before we finished all Masechta, later in life, Chavruz came and went. I kept leaving it off in the middle. I've learned parts of Masechta, but a was done, just not a common occurrence to me. So I love the feeling of achievement that I get doing the daf. True, I wouldn't pass a Dishu test, but I'm not worried about that yet. To me, it's about the Yoyimir, about laying the foundation of Yedias first. What's the, what's the Lashon over there? Ligrois and Hod, whatever, okay. And then building additional layers of knowledge with each cycle for the rest of my life. Thank you, Eli, for being our tour guide through this Shas Safari. Just paying attention. Hajjan Allah Mesech Zuma and Mazel Tov to us all. Lauren Spiegelman Yishkoyach. And I'm not going to read this one because it's a long one. We don't have time. But a chaplain from a jail in Pennsylvania. His name is Rabbi Yitzchok Kolokowski, the, Ko the Koblenzer Rav. He asked, he said, inmates came to him. They said they want to do the daf with us. Can we please send them Gemaras? It's unbelievable how far reaching this is. So we said, sure, we're sending him four copies of both volumes, and hopefully he uh, keeps, up, uh, keeps us updated. Rabbi Isai, tonight is the Siyum by the Koisel, 715 Mincha, and Rabbi Orlovsky is speaking. There are still, I scared everybody away, I said $10,000 for sponsorship. Well, it is costing us over 300 shekel per person, and a lot of the very hush of people here sponsored 100 shekel towards the 300 shekel. So we're still looking for some sponsors. So... If anybody wants to sponsor, jump on in. And let's do the final daf of Yuma. We're, huh? I don't want to, I don't want to embarrass you, Father. Baruch Lipton, what's the story? Are you coming back next week, Sechta? Have you made a decision? <laughs> well, I need to know if to say goodbye or not. A public goodbye. Fine. I hope, hopefully not. Ari, where is he? Shalom Aleichem. How you doing? Back. Unbelievable. All the way from Gold is Green, no? All right. We are holding the Pezayin Omidal. The first time in history that we didn't turn the page by the end of the day. But it's not a problem. We're going to get to where we need to get to. Last, last words on Pezayin Omidal. Gishmak Yesugis Rabo Yisai. Rav, have a posik sidro. Kamei the Rebbe. Rav, the famous Rav, the Goladar. Who? Rav, Tanahu, Upalig. Rav was the last of the Tanoim and the first of the Amaraim. So he has the ability to argue on Tanoim. So he was reading some Navi in front of Rebbe. Rebbe, Rebbe Danasi, the author of the Mishnah. Rebbe is obviously a Tana. Ayil, that was turning to that Pizayin of the base, sponsored. Wow, that was early. By the MDY Tilim group. For all those who need Shiduchim Rafuas Yeshuas, please join Tehillim dot 
Eight Mindaf dot com. Also, Reb Chia, huh? Yeah. Now it's Omid Aleph, so we're going really slow now. Where is this thing? Oh. Also, Reb Chia, Hadelaresha. Shows up the famous Reb Chia. So he says, you know, I got to start from the beginning. Ayo Bar Kaporo, Hadelaresha. Then Bar Kaporo shows up. Ayo Laresha. Also, Reb Shimon Berebi, another Tana, Hadelaresha. Also, Reb Chanino Bar Choma. Now, Reb Chanino Bar Choma comes in. Omar, Kuli, Hai, Nedim, and Ezra. We're going to come. We're going to turn back to the beginning every single time. Does it? It just doesn't work. Okay. Now, who's Reb Chanino Bar Choma? So, I, this I do remember from Avod Zara. In Avod Zara, there's an amazing story that Rebbe, who we're just talking about, Rebbe, and Antoninus, the Goisha king, used to meet every day. But the king had a tunnel. He would meet Rebbe. He didn't want anybody to know it. He's meeting a Jew. And he'd bring with him two slaves. And as he got to Rebbe's house, he'd take one slave, chop off his head, kill him. And then when he got back home, he'd kill the second slave. Nobody knew about this meeting. And the Gemara says that Reb Chanino Bar Chama was, was there. And Antoninus looks at Rebbe and he says, what are you doing? I told you no, nobody could be here. He says, listen, Barnash, this guy is not, a, he's not human. He's above human. In fact, he says, go get me my guy. The guy he just killed, he says, go call him. So he goes and he sees he's dead. He, he had a dilemma. What should I do? The king told me to get him. But if I tell him that he's dead, you, you don't. So he daven and did tchis hamesim. So we're talking about a person that does tchis hamesim to people that their heads are chopped off. And he walks into the room and Rav says, uh-uh, that's Atkan. I'm not, I'm not reading it again. Sit down. Says the Gemara. Now that we know Reb, Reb Chanino, Reb Chanino Bar Chom is, Loi he didn't take it back. He didn't go from the start. Ikbin Reb Chanino. Reb Chanino is upset. What, what am I, chopped liver? You went back for all these other people, but not for me. Also, Rav Ligabet, Leiser Mali, Yom Kippur, Rav went to ask Mechila 13 years in a row. Meloi Pius. Uh-uh. Now, if you stop the story right here, like I did, and unfortunately, and I went to Davin, and I thought, you know, how could a, such a Choshev guy not be Moichel? <laughs> it's very obvious. We'll see the story. We have to finish the story. Then you'll understand why. But for 13 years, he said, no. No Mechila. Ask the Gemara Veicha Ovid Hachi. How are you allowed to do such a thing? If you go ask Mechila, you ask Finished. You go, you ask three times. The guy says no three times. You finish. You don't, you don't go more. Now, in the Shulchan Aruch, brought down, you can go more. But we just learned, you don't go, you don't go. He doesn't want, why chepe him? You did your shtalos, says Gemara, Rav Shani. So there's a number of pshatim here. Either we're talking about Rav. Rav was more machmed than everybody else. A regular person doesn't have to. Or he is a Rav. He is a Rebbe. Rebbe Hanino was a Rebbe. So you have to treat a Rebbe differently. Okay. Says the Gemara, but what about Rebbe Hanino? Rebbe Hanino echa wadachi. How could Rebbe Hanino not be moichel? Vama rava, kola mavre al midoisov, mavir in loyal kol pshav. One of the biggest studies in Yiddishkeit. If you overcome your bad attributes, your midas, rise, you don't want to forgive somebody, but you do anyways, then Hashem will act with you, midah connected midah. Hashem could also take revenge on you. You did X, Y, Z, let's, let's make a cheshman. But Hashem says, look at this guy. He's a guy that's moichel other people. I'll be moichel him as well. So how could such a chash of a person who's mechayim mesim hold on to a grudge for 13 years? Says the Gemara, I'll tell you why. Elo Reb Chanino, chel mechazi leile rav. Now, what I forgot to tell you is that Reb Chanino was a Talmud of Rebbe, Reb Yudanasi, and he took over for Reb Yudanasi. He was a Rosh Hashiva. And he, he saw in a, in, a, in a dream that Rav is going to be hung on a tree. Now, you would think if you're a dream interpreter, hung on a tree is bad news. It's good news. Hung on a tree means the cold is a Kfu Bidikla Reish Avi. So he made a Cheshman like this Rav is going to be a Rosh Hashiva. I just saw it in a dream. Whose Yeshiva is going to take over? Mine. You know what that means? I'm a dead man. If I'm Moichelim, I go bye-bye. So what am I going to do? I'm not going to be Moichelim. And what's Rav going to do? He's going to book out of here. He's going to go to Bavel, which he did. And he's going to be the, the Galadar in Bavel. Gavaldi Kachashman saved his life. 
So don't say, oh, how could he do it? It's a Russia. He had a good cheshbon. Now, this also reminds me of a, of a, of a joke. So it's a story joke. It's probably not a true joke. It's only for, for people that know Reb Baruch Humar Chedzrachi. We wanted him to come speak by us. And uh, it's basically for me and Mendy. <laughs> I mean, you have to understand the person in order to appreciate the joke. But basically, the Israeli army was coming to the yeshiva, and all the Bachram disappeared. They hid in closets. And a Bachram sees Reb Baruch Humar Chedzrachi under a bed. He's like, Rebbe. You're 80 years old. What are you doing under a bed? You, you're not, you, you can't be a soldier. Like, they're not going to look for you. He says, what? They're not looking for a general? <laughs> now, if you know him, it's, man, it's unbelievable. <laughs> anyway, the calls is a kafu of a declaration, Havi. He's going to be the head, no matter what. Wherever he is, he's going to be the head. I got I to make sure he doesn't become my Rosh Hashiva. Omer Shmami no Baile Mevav they're gonna. They're, they're about to change the guards here. Somebody's gonna be my Rosh Hashiva, my Yeshiva. Le Pius. I. I he, didn't, he wasn't Michael. Keichet the Lazer. Ligmar Raisa be Bava. Let him go. Let him go to Bava. Let him be a Rosh Hashiva over there. Okay. New sogia. Torah Rabbana. Mitzvahs vidui. Erevim kippim chashecha. This is a mitzvah to do vidui to confess. We learn from this every time in the Gemara that if somebody was Michael, somebody else was supposed to have a chesed like this. I'm sure. I'm sure. Yeah. 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 You're talking about Tanoim and Marayim. They don't have... Where do you see that? What do you see? We have to see. Every page almost is just every... All the time. The question is, every time the Chesed... Yeah. All right, let's go. Zog to Gemara. Torah Rabbana. Mitzvah's vidu. This is a mitzvah to confess. Chatois. I think everybody knows that right before a person is nifter, they say vidu with them. It's a mitzvah. Confession. You do this by mincha time, before him kipper. You should do this by before mincha. He should do it by mincha, sorry, before he eats. Why? He's going to have a big suda of seconds here. There's going to be a lot of wine. He's going to get drunk. And he's going to, he's, he's, he, he might get drunk. Something might happen. He might choke on something. Unfor we had an unfortunate story in my building uh, on Purim. Uh, somebody in my building took his father out. He was not, and he choked on a on a piece of steak and he was lifted around Purim. So you could have a suda and uh, you could choke. It happens. So Mela say vidu. Try to say vidu when you can. And even though he said vidu already by mincha, he should say vidu after mincha after suda mafsekes. When is that Rabbi Sai? So some people say, the Mishabur brings this Gemara as Tfilah Zaka, that we say. Tfilah Zaka, th that's a vidui. We sit down, when we have some time, we say another vidui, because we already said vidui. Say it again. And then he says, by my rev, Yisvada Shachris. He says vidui again in Shachris. Shachris, Yisvada B'Mosa, B'Mosa, Yisvada B'Mincha, B'Mincha, Yisvada B'Neila. We know all this. No Chidush Shemir. We say vidui over and over and over. Why? The, the, the main vidu, by the way, is all the way at the end of the day. That's how we pass in the, the, the kapara comes at the end of the Yom Kippur. But we're saying it. We don't know if we're going to reach there. So we keep on saying it. Okay. Burachum is? Yeah. New. <laughs> For those few seconds you didn't learn, says the guy. Very interesting. The guy could say it. What is the word ni'ilah? Ni'ilah. So Rashi brings Machlokes and Yerushalmi. Either Ni'ilah means the closing. Rashi says the closing of the doors of the Azara, which Luchari means the Heichal. They would close the doors of the Heichal right after the Menorah, which is during the daytime. That's why Ni'ilah, according to that sheet, is during the day, still like right before Shkia. Or Ni'ilah Shemayim. We we believe we that's how we think of it. Ni'ilah Shemayim, the, the the closing of the doors of Shemayim, and that happens after Shkia. Where do you stick in? The vidui yachid achet filasai. So I didn't print this out for anybody, but if you look in your machzor, where do we say it? We say b'sefer chayim ra'ah. Baruch atah Hashem and Baruch Samah Yisrael b'shalom. That's it. Shmoneh is basically over. According to the Vilna Gaon, once you say yil ratzon imri fi vegim, it's over, over. Forget it. So you don't even you don't say yil ratzon. Otherwise, you can't. 
And then you start vidui, Oshamnu, Vaganu, and then vidui, right? So it's after, if you pay attention, it's after Shmon Esri is over. That's where vidui is for a yachid. Okay. Now, a chazin says it in the middle. What's in the middle? Shmon Esrei, on Yom Kippur, like on Yantiv and Shav, is comprised of seven brachas. Three in the beginning, three at the end, and one in the center. Mekadish Yisrael Vazman, and whatever the brach is over there, right? So that's where you stick, that's where the chazin starts, the whole vidui. Yeah. The whole process is zakhar, it's after, well, it's right before, actually, right before the bracha of Mikadish. The, that, the middle bracha, the fourth bracha of Shemur Nasra. Okay? Here. Yeah. Mikadish Yisrael V'yem HaKippurim. Melech, well, Melech, Moyach V'Selech, Levin Seder, Levin Zama V'Yisrael, Ma'avir Hashem Yisrael, Bechol Shonah V'Shonah, that long bracha is the center, the middle bracha, we say vidi right before that. Okay. What does he say exactly? He says, Omar Rav, Ato Yodeya Rozei Oilam. So that's what we say. Ato Yodeya Rozei Oilam. Okay. Ushmul Omar, Mimakia Leib. We don't really know what that is. Vilevi Omar, Bisiros Chakos of Leimor. We have way too many Averis. So that we do say, say it afterwards. Until I was created, formed, I, I shouldn't have been born. I'm not, I'm not worthy to be born. Like the famous Machloikis, Bisham Misilel. Uh, the whole thing, that, that, that Shailah. The same kind of Lashon. Now that I was created, I didn't really accomplish much. When I'm alive, I am dust. So certainly after a person dies, he is dust. He didn't get better after he dies. Yankel Galinsky says, he went over to the, one of the Balgaivists that he knows. He says, didn't you just finish saying, you're offer. He says, yeah, I'm offer. So why is such a Balgaiva? <laughs> I'm not Stam offer. I'm your Shalim Dick offer. I'm worth. <laughs> okay. Uh, well, your Shalim offer and Ohio offer is the same exact thing. It has the same value, basically. It's just the real estate is worth more. It's not a. The offer is offer. Is offer. Get, that in, they get that straight. Yeah. They do sell your Shalim offer now. That's for the that's for the naive people and the Americanish gullible guys. I'll sell you a bag of your shalim offer, only two hundred dollars. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Shine that dirt that they sell, your shalim dirt. By the way, it's the same guy that buys that. He'll buy the Ohio dirt, thinking that's your shalim dirt. It's a. Over in Bechaya, I have a chaim misasi. Harani lefanecha kechli malei busho chlima. What am I? I'm a vessel full of waste, full of this busho chlima. I'm, I'm an embarrassment. And that which I did sin, you should completely, what's the uproot, destroy, erase completely, obliterate, obliterate, forget it, next word. It would have been easier, some, some people are going to say, like just erase, but I guess is a stronger Lushen. Liberation. Avaloy de Yisurim. Gary, how's it going up there? Kacha, kacha. Zoom, this, that. Well, as long as the guys don't get dizzy in today's shear, you know what I mean? A lot of people on Zoom. Wow, 122 people on Zoom. Beautiful. London Seum. If you guys are still watching, there's a big Seum in London. Where? And then I forgot where it was. And the tri state area, there's a big, big Seum. Yochin Onitskowitz. Mom is working hard to put it all together. All right. And Mark Ashkenazi is not working very hard because he's sitting here and relaxing in Eretz Yisrael. V'hainu viduye derova kulishato. So this, this vidui is what we just mentioned. This whole thing is what Rava used to say every day of the year. I think Hasidim say this every day of the year, no? Is that Nusach Svard? Anybody? 
But they do a whole, they do the Shamnu thing. Okay. They do Yud Gimel Midas. Ude Rav Amnuna Zuto Biyomi De Kippure. And this is what Rav Amnuna, the small one, would say on Yom Kippur. Omar Mar Zutra, Le Amar Nelo, Adolim Aval Anachnu Chotanu. Aval Anachnu Chotanu. Aval Omar, Aval Anachnu Chotanu. Once he says those words, we sinned, that's it. It's over. Sulei Tzarek, you don't say Vidi after that because he already said, we sinned. He's Maida. Dorm Bar Hamdude. There's a person by the name of Bar Hamdude. By the way, the only time in Shas. Habakoyim Nekha made the Shmuel. He said, I was there right in front of Shmuel. Vavi Yosef. And Shmuel was sitting. Bechimot HaShlicha the Tzibura. When the Shlich Tzibur came, Ba'omar, Aval Anachnu Chotanu, come make him. He stood up. What do you see from here? That one should stand during Vidui. But you see that Rava held that Anachnu Chotanu is Vidui and you don't have to, once you say that, that's it. Omer Shema Mino, Ikir Vidui, Hai Hu. So you see from that, that those words are Ikir Vidui and that's what's brought down in Shulchan Aruch. Not awesome. B'Shloi Shaprogam HaShonu Koyhanim Noisim Kapeim Arba Pa'amim Bayoim. I'd still need a clock, Gary, if you could do that for me. Shkoyach. It's quarter two. There are three periods in the year that the Koyhanim do Duchanin Arba Pa'amim Bayoim. So Rashi points out that Arba Pam Biyoim is not literally four times a day. It just means the any time that we're davening, whatever tefillah is available, that's when they dochen. So daven, chakras, mincha. There's no musaf during the year on these things. But we'll see in a second. Arba Pam Bishachras, Bim Musaf, Bim Mincha, Ubini So Rashi says, ignore the musaf. That's not really what we have during these days. But we do have Ni'ila, believe it or not, in the middle of the year. That I couldn't believe. What are the tiny eyes? They used to do a little Ni'ila going. Little Ni'ila. You believe it? We think Ni'ila is specific for Yom Kippur? No. They had tainas. There were a lot of tsars. They didn't have the famine. They didn't have the rain. It was a big deal for them. They didn't import vegetables from Spain or whatever. They needed the rain. So they made it, they made it serious. Ube Mamadais. Mamadais, as we discussed this a number of times, the Yisraelim, not the Kohan and Levim, the Yisraelim had to be in the Beis Hamikdash by the carbon Tomit every single day. But not all of Klai Yisrael could go, so they sent in representatives. And those representatives were the Mamadois. And part of them, some of them would daven very heavily, as Rashi brings down here. It was like a, a big davening, and part of their davening was in the Elah. Obviously they had a Shachras and a Mincha, and they had also in the Elah. And during those davenings, there would be Duchening. So not just the duchening in Shachris, which we have in Eretz Yisrael, but also during Mincha. Also during, by the way, the Vilna Gain, I believe, says that you do duchening by Mincha on a Tainus. He does. In Eretz Yisrael they do? All Eretz Yisrael. Okay, fine. Because Eretz Yisrael goes on al uh, Shita Sagra, everything. The reason why we do duchening in Eretz Yisrael to begin with, I was just thinking about it. I'm sure Lubavitch also does duchening in Eretz Yisrael. I never heard otherwise. Anybody been in Lubavitch show? Here, yeah, yeah. I dive in here in the, the Chabad. They have duchening, and it's all based on the Vilna Gain, which, you know, it's a little bit of a contradiction, but what? What do you mean they? Everybody says it, but not before the Tamidah Gain came to Israel. Tamidah Gain established it here. Anyway. Spider in America, yeah. Rav Shteyman, when he went to America, down by the Spider, because he wanted to hear Bigger's Kehanim. That's one reason that he told Oilam. There's other reasons. <laughs> Anyway, so, <laughs> what happened? That was, funny. <laughs> that was even funnier that you left 20 seconds later. <laughs> like, yeah, there's a bunch of new people watching here. Nachman Seltzer. Him go at it every day. All right. Zogdi Gemara. Because you're schmoozing with him. you like, you have the joke. No? Stop, took you 20 seconds? Okay, fine. Wow. Hmm? <laughs> well, you're, he already established that he doesn't have to ask me, I don't have to ask him. I don't know about my part. I'm asking you, Mechil. Where are we? Oh, so you are paying attention. That's yesterday's daf. Yeah. Um, I have no idea where we are. Oh, man. My needle charm. Here we go. My needle charm. What does this mean? Rav Omar Tzloisi Tirta. What is Ni'ilah? 
We think we know what Ni'ila is. We have it in our machzor. Remember, throughout, when we're learning brachas, they didn't have machzor. A chazan would get up and say whatever he thought was the proper nusach, and they, some, some of them got mixed up. So they had their own little uh, nuschais going on. Rav Yatirto. So we have to pay attention here. Rav is of the opinion that Ni'ila is its own specific davening. Lushmod Omar. No! Ma'anu mechayenu. It's a few psukim. It's a huge thing. According to Shmuel, you don't get to sell Psichas <laughs> Nila. It doesn't exist. It's done. Okay. Therefore, comes a big Nafkimina la Allah. Meisve. Or Yamikipur Mispal Sheva Misvado. The night, Mayrev. You daven a regular Shmonesri. Three in the beginning, three in the end, and one in the middle, seven. Bishach is Pal Sheva Misvada, regular Shachas. But most of his Pal Sheva Misvada, and you stick in Vidu every single time. Bin Mincha is Pal Sheva Misvada. Bin Ila is Pal Sheva Misvada. We don't really do that today. We don't do the whole. We, we do a Shamnu. We don't do the Al Chait. But what does it say here? It, it says, yeah, okay, it's uh, whatever. Well, not the Vidu that we we're talking about before. Okay, maybe, yeah. Ni'ila is a full-fledged tefillah, it says over here. Not like Shmuel. Oh, ma'onu mechayenu. It's like Rav. Mispal Sheva. It's a whole Shmuel Hesra. It's with the brachas and everything. Skip a few words here. Tanayin ha'zayin 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 You say vidu at the end. There are mayor. Okay. Now, you say, what do you say? V'choysin bevidu. says Rashi. Hakel hasalchan. Rather than saying Mikadish Yisrael, which I read before, that long bracha. That's how he that's how Ramir holds. Okay, Lasalchan. Hashem who forgives. If he wants to, otherwise he can do something else. To Yufta the Shmuel. To Yufta. This is this is not a kasha. This is a Tiyufta. This is the this checkmate. Over here it says Mufurish that Nila is a full fledged manasra. Ula Barav, Nochis Kamedirava. Ula went down to Davin in front of the Rava, right? Like the Bima is Oyla Latari, go up. The Chazan went into a well. He went down. So over here, you have like sort of a combination. It's like Rav, is a full fledged monastery, but also like a little bit like Shmuel, they said, and he, he praised him. You say, you say the you say the ni'ila, yeah? Akhir tfilasa. Omarav, tfilas ni'ila poiteris eshel arvis. Here is a very interesting sugya. Comes Rav and says, listen, since you said ni'ila at night, you don't need a Davin Mayriv. What's the point of Davin Mayriv? You just said a beautiful tfila for Hashem. What's the point of Davin Mayriv? Rav the Tamidom at Rav holds that it's an individual tfila, so it, it, it could replace Mayriv. Vikivin tzale. Since you daven, you don't have to say anything else. We actually paskin. You can see over here, there's a test. We paskin la'alacha that Mayriv is a rishos. Don't go not davening Mayriv now. We took it upon ourselves to daven. But Rav holds like that as well, that you don't have to daven Mayriv. So what do you mean that if you daven Ni'ila, you don't have to daven Mayriv? You don't have to daven Mayriv anyway. Says the Gemara, According to that mandama that says that it's obligatory, if you dive in Nila, you don't have to dive in my Meisve, Yoyam, Kippur, Mispal, Sheva, Misvada. Shach, Sheva, Misvada. We said this already, right? So we can do this again. All the Shmoneh Esri's name, Kippur, you say seven brachas and vidui. Musav, Sheva, Misvada. Vidui, Mispal, Sheva, Misvada. Arvis, Mishal. Oh, and here it says, Arvis, Mayriv. Mayriv, Mispal, Sheva, Me'en, Shmoneh Esri. Mayriv. You see, he's supposed to dive in Shmoneh uh, Mayriv. That what? But here's the interesting. You take all 13 brachas. You do three in the beginning, three, but the 13 in the middle, you take them, condense them, do an uh, eight minute, uh, eight second kind of thing, throw it into Havinenu, and you're good to go. Why? Because it's Matzim Kippur. We don't want you, you're still fasting, you're, you're famished. So we give you uh, a Zaptur, according to this Mandoma. It's not true. It has to be proper Shmon Esrei. You have to say, You can't do Havinenu. But I call upon him, you see that you have to say Mayriv, not like Rav. Says the Gemara Tanoi. It's in fact the Machlaik Tanoi. Daf Pei Chesom and Aleph. The Sanya called Chayovit Tfilis. By the way, we're only going to Tonu Rabbanon like 10 lines from the bottom. Tanoi. The Sanya called Chayovit Tfilis, Toivlin Kedarkon, Biyoy Makipurim. Now, you're not allowed to take a bath on Yom Kippur. But that's for Tainik for pleasure. 
But if you have to take a bath, you have to go into the mikvah because otherwise you can't dive in. You can't dive in when you're tame. So Mela, you could go to the mikvah. So if you have you have a chi of a tvila, you go to the mikvah yom kippur. Therefore, need of your ledes type lice kedarkon belayla yom kippur. If a woman is a nida or she gave birth, goes to the mikvah the night of yom kippur. Balkari type of ahilach adam incha. Person that has an emission, he's a balkari. He goes to the mikvah because he he, he goes during the day. Only a, 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 a nida and a ledes are the only ones that go at night. A zav zava. The 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 uh Mitzayir, all the Balkari go during the day. So when does he go? He goes up until Mincha. In other words, you see from here that Ni'ila only is only at night. Because if Ni'ila is during the day, so why would you go to the mikvah only until Mincha? You have to go to the mikvah for Ni'ila. You can't have a mincha without going to the mikvah. You're Tomei, you're Balkari. How can you have a mincha? Uh, Ni'ila. You see, the Ni'ila belongs at night, and you go to the mikveh at night. And therefore what? If that's the case, if Ni'ila belongs at night, so Ni'ila will pot my rib. You don't have to say my rib. They're connected. That's what we're trying to figure out here. Could you dive in Ni'ila instead of my rib? By the way, in our days, women, men, nobody goes to the mikveh and kippur. Because we don't have, because we pass in few of the mitzvah, we're going to talk about it in a second that there's a mitzvah to go when you have to go. Right away. You don't wait to, to, to the night. So if a woman has to go, go. A man has to go, he goes right away on the day. But we're not even dealing with tefillah b'zman and mitzvah today. We're, we, we're more machmer and everything, so it's not the zman. So Mela, we don't go to the mikvah on Yom Kippur. Rabbi Yaisi Oymer, Kala Yom Kulay. Rabbi Yaisi says that Ni'ila belongs during the day. So Mela, he needs to be toivel for his Ni'ila. So no matter when he's about carry, he should go to the mikvah, Yom Kippur, every hour of the day before he dive in Nila. Viriminu, I have a question. We have literally a contradiction that says, the race says the opposite. Azov, Azov, Hametzorim, Hametzorim, These are all people that are telling me I have to go to the mikvah. Boil, Nido, Tmei, Mei, somebody touched a dead person. Toivlin, Kedarka, Yom Kippur. Go to the mikvah, otherwise they can't dive it. Nido, Yom Kippur, 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 what does Rabbi Yossi say? The exact opposite of what he said a second ago. A second ago, Rabbi Yossi said he could, he, he's toiled the entire day. And now Rabbi Yossi says, no. Only up until Mincha. Finished. Which means that Rabbi Yossi holds that Ni'ila belongs at night. Not like he said before that Ni'ila belongs during the day. Says the Gemara. So the first attempt of, at this is, Ha did Sally tefilas nila? Ha the late Sally. Very simple answer. If he daven the ila, he has no need to go to the mikveh anymore. What's the point of him going to mikveh at four o'clock in the afternoon? He already daven the ila. The whole point of going to the mikveh is that you, to prepare yourself for, for the ila. But he already daven. Ha the late Sally says the Gemara. He did Sally. If he daven the ila, might I might the rabbanon? How do rabbanon allow you to go to the mikveh afterwards? Chasar rabbanon tefila bismano mitzvah. Because Rabbanon hold that it's a mitzvah to go when you have to go. That is a mitzvah. Right when you need to go to the mikvah, that's when you run to the mikvah. So the first b'raisa, according to everybody, tefillah b'zmano is not a mitzvah. And so the machloik is in the first b'raisa is whether or not ni'ila belongs to the night or to the day. But the second b'raisa, the machloik is whether or not tefillah b'zmano mitzvah. Is there a mitzvah to go right away when you have to go? Bechlad, Rabbi Yossi, Savar, Lav Mitzvah. So it seems like Rabbi Yossi himself holds that it's not a mitzvah to go right away. And therefore, he says, don't go after Mincha. You don't have a chiyuv. A person became a Balkari after he daven Mincha. When should he go to the mikvah? If Tfilo Bizmana Mitzvah, as soon as he has the ability to go to the mikvah, Balkari goes that day, let him go right now. On Yom Kippur, he has a mitzvah to go, chiyuv to go. From the fact that Rabbi Yossi says that after Mincha, he daven already, and he became a Balkari. He does not go to the mikvah. He waits a few hours until nighttime. That means he holds. Tefillah b'zmana is not a mitzvah. Now, if we could prove that he holds it's a mitzvah to go right away, then it's a problem. And that's what we're going to do. The answer to that problem is that it's two rabbiyoses. Okay, Vatanya. We learned this in this Masechta. Beautiful thing. A guy pulls off one of the greatest pranks of all time. He doesn't like his friend much. So he writes Hakadosh Baruch Hu's name on the guy's arm while he's sleeping in a magic marker. You know they do that in camp. Don't they? Uh, this time he went a little far. He puts Hashem's name in there. 
The guy now cannot go to the bathroom, cannot take a shower. He stinks everywhere. Like, what's wrong with you? What is it, the nine days? He's like, no, I have Hashem's name on my arm. And now he has a tefillah mitzvah that he has to go to. What does he do? He can't go to a place that has waste. So now he's about carry and he has to go to the mikvah. He can't daven now. He can't learn Torah. A person in those days, about carry, can't learn Torah, right? Tefillah says he has to go. That's why they go to the mikvah every day. Can't learn Torah. So what does he do? Imagine you go to the mikvah and there's a filter system and the water is really strong, Raj says. There's a current from the mikvah. It could wash off the Hashem's name. So to protect Hashem's name, you put some reed over it. All it's doing is, it's, it's creating a barrier. It's not that water shouldn't go there. You have to have water touch your skin and everything. But that the current, the strong current shouldn't take it off. Forget about the reed. Go into the mikvah with Hashem's name. Don't rub it off. We explained. Rabbi Yossi holds. Rabbi Yossi is the opinion that it's a mitzvah to go today. Today, right now, if I look for reeds and a whole contraption to put on my arm, I'm going to miss, it's already shkia. I'm going to miss the day. And it's, it's better for me to go right now with maybe Hashem's name will be erased than, than go looking for reeds. So over here we see that we see, oh, it's a mitzvah. It's a mitzvah to go right now. Don't look for reeds. A second ago we said, the Rebbe Yossi says, don't go to the mikvah Yom Kippur, wait until nighttime. Why? Because it's not a mitzvah. So the only way out of this kind of question is, I hear Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehudi. That's not the famous Rabbi Yossi. That's Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda. The sign of Rabbi Yossi Bar Yehuda, Oimer, Dayelet Tfilo Shtebach Reino. We're talking about Rabbi Yossi Ben Chalafta. The famous, there's one Rabbi Yossi in Shas, Rabbi Yossi Ben Chalafta. This one, by the way, unintentionally, it looks like the American flag. I did not have that in mind. Somebody pointed out when we were learning Nida. This is Sugya Nida. We're not going to go into the Sugya, but the, the Gemara over there, just to remind her, refresh everybody's memory, the Gemara says, how is it possible a woman goes, a woman goes to the mikvah 80 times? 80 times, 95 times according to one man, according to another man, 35 times. It was one of these sugis, like, how could you get the max tefillos? So a woman who had amnesia, she gave birth, she doesn't remember when she gave birth, how she gave birth, was she in a state of ziva? That, the kids are, that whole sugi only goes, if you hold that tefillah bizman and mitzvah, you have to go right away. So she'll go in the morning for a ziva. She goes in the evening for a nida. She goes in the morning for a ziva. Every day she keeps on going and going and going. Why not go just at night? Why do you have to go in the morning and in the evening? Because in the morning is one mitzvah. Tefillah is manu mitzvah right now. Just go. You have a chiv to go. Go now. I am going at night. No. Night is the second time. That also only works if you hold Tefillah is manu mitzvah. Comes Rabbi Yossi. Bar Yehuda and says, no. This whole chart you could throw away in the garbage. Go to the mikvah on the final, final day. One time. Because he holds feels man love mitzvah. So that's Rabbi Yossi Ber Behuda. We're holding by Rabbi Yossi Ben Chalafta, the famous Rabbi Yossi Ben Chalafta, he holds feels man mitzvah. And therefore, it's not a contradiction. Mazel tov, everybody. We'll see you at the Kaisal tonight. Be'ezer Hashem 715. Good morning. 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 Celebrity. Mark Ashkenazi, the celebrity. <laughs> Unbelievable. Hi, Mark. We miss you. Mark, 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 Mark. Mark, we're right. We need you. Mark. He's in Israel. Rabbi, even of all the proof, I don't believe he's there. <laughs> <laughs> he's a clown. He I want to proof. know, Nechami, how much are you enjoying not having to climb up that ladder through that hole in the ceiling? Go ahead, Ben. If we're gonna have like a, a Zoom nice. broadcast of MDY or something, <laughs> if we're, we're gonna have a see a bit of a sailing there, is that an illegal alien?